looking up at heaven, but you won't be anywhere inside. They asked me to stick around, but without you, it just wasn't right. So I've been looking up at heaven. Hi, and welcome to Atheism TV's My Deconversion. This is a show where we interview people who were once religious and have made the exodus out of religion and are now living a life fulfilled without any God. And now let me introduce today's guest, Fabian. Thank you, Fabian. Appreciate you uh, being here with us today. Not a problem. And, um, well, as we typically want to do, we want to find out a little something about you. So uh, if you want to, just kind of introduce yourself uh, to us and, you know, who is Fabian? <laughs> That's an enigma right there. Um, well, I've, uh, I grew up in the church and I, ever since uh, I turned 18, I pretty much moved out of the house. I joined the military. I've been traveling the world ever since. I've been a, to 26 different countries, lived in nine different states, five different countries I've lived in. And, uh, yeah, I've, See, I've been to a lot of places. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy moving around. Um, well, obviously, the show has to do a lot about people who have deconverted, which means that one time right. you were converted. Uh, basically, how did you come to be religious, and uh, what flavor of religion were you involved in? I was actually born into the church. I was raised in a Pentecostal family. Uh, we are the. I come from a very large family uh, where we. On my mom's side, we're looking at, uh, she comes from a family of uh, 16 brothers and sisters. 16 brothers and sisters, are they? Yes. What religious were they? Uh, primarily Pentecostal, or at least, you know, that, fla that flavor. Gosh, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not accustomed to, uh, you know, Catholics or, or Mormons tend to right. have, you know, uh, entire towns. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, the sixteen. Oh my goodness! But yeah, no, like uh, my grandfather, he was a he was a minister. Uh, his wife would travel around with him all the time. And, and this was Pentecostal. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, she was she was always with him, and they would. Uh, you now everything was for uh, everything was in some way religious for them. Okay. Uh, uh, out of the kids that they had, I'll. Quite a few of them are are actually you know ministers or married to ministers. I think I could I think it's about five. And this are, is of your grandparents' children that are ministers or married yes. to ministers. Okay. And have they all remained like Pentecostals? Have they gone mostly. off into Baptists or uh, Episcopalian, whatever? They're? It's mostly in that genre. Yeah. Okay. So primarily Pentecostal. So you you were born. Into religion. Now, did you go to public school? Were you homeschooled? How did they, was, did they instill this religion in you? Uh, well, the, uh, primarily I went to public schools. Okay. Uh, there was one year that I did go to a uh, church. My church sponsored a, uh, a, a school for a while. I attended it for a year, just my second grade year. Okay. And I'm still not very happy about that when I'm, you know, I got. I, even the last time I was talking to my mother, I even told her then that I'm still pissed off about it. Because the entire time that I was there, it was, I didn't learn anything out of it except for, uh, how to cheat the system, how to make things work in my favor. And I didn't learn anything as far as reading math, the science, and even the science that they did have was crap. And this was, you said second grade? Yes. So, what are you, seven? And you're making, you already have made this determination that this is pretty much BS here. <laughs> well, the school was uh, the at school, that point. Okay. I was I was pretty much a uh, very much into the uh, the church scene at that point. I it's but I did uh, I was smart enough to realize that you know, science is not always God did it. Mm -hmm. I did want to even whenever I was seven, I still wanted to be a scientist at that point. Uh, that but I was told that you know, that well, it's not probably the best decision because scientists are atheist. Go figure, huh? <laughs> so, uh, and who was it? Your parents who would tell you that yeah. that they were kind of concerned about science and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so, did you accept it carte blanche at that time? I mean, at such a young age. I mean, you, you tend to trust your parents. Or what? What went through that little head at, at seven and eight years old, or however old you were? Uh, a lot, actually. Uh, I'm pretty much. I, I enjoyed the thought of science. I enjoyed the uh, uh, a lot of what. 
uh, what was there. I, I understood enough about science to know that it's, uh, well, a lot goes into science, not just, you know, you read from a book and you right. say, this yeah. is that. Uh, I have found a lot of it interesting as far as, you know, chemistry. Uh, I, I enjoyed biology. I enjoyed uh, history. It's, but I was still, you know, very heavily into the church, and I, you know, it was still, you know, oh, well, the earth is 6,000 years old. So that's you know, that's really one of the biggest things that you know started to you know open my eyes to everything. Okay. Now, were you the the only child, or do you have any brothers? Uh, I do have an older brother. O- older brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, how did this religion fare with him? Did you all ever uh, have these secret discussions at night while mom and dad were sleeping about? Gosh, I don't know if I believe this or. Uh, actually, my brother and I refused. Oh, well, my brother refused to talk to me on the issue. He knows, uh, he knows that I am, uh, I'm atheist. And he's, he refuses to discuss the, the whole topic with me. Oh, so he's still fairly religious. Oh, then? yeah. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah, he still okay. attends church every Sunday. Uh, he's, uh, he, he goes to church with my mom and dad even. And so when you were growing up together, did you ever, did you ever express your concerns about, say, science, uh, you felt wasn't in line with the Bible? Uh, and if you did, what was his response then? Or as you said, he, he refused to talk with you ever about it? Or, uh, well, it wasn't that he re- ever refused. He always refused. It was more along the lines of, as we got more into, uh, well, as we started broadening our, our horizons, he stayed within the church. And as I started to move away from it, uh, he just refused to bring up the subject at all. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, like uh, going to school goes, we uh, I think it was my uh, sophomore year. His uh, he was a senior at the time. We were both in the same biology classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, believe me, my teacher loved that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do believe the words that he said when he saw us walk in the room. He's like, "Oh, I got both of them." <laughs> but you know, uh, we both did fairly well in the class. It's not that we you know. That we uh, would go through and say, "Oh, this is wrong because you know the Bible says it goes this way." Now, we you know did the class. Uh, although I, I, if I look back on it now, I think I got a little bit more out of it than he did. Okay, All right. No offense. And, and, and I'm sure none taken. Uh, <laughs> now, as far as Pentecostalism, there. I mean, I was uh, when I first got saved. Uh, was part of the Pentecostal Church of God from Cleveland, Tennessee, then the Assembly of God, which is their main headquarters right here in Missouri in Springfield, uh, at least it was years ago. And then there are others. You have Oneness Pentecostals, you have Apostolic Pentecostals. I mean, there's many Pentecostals as there are blades of grass. Uh, so what, what dogma of Pentecostalism did your family embrace? Or was it just Honestly, tongue talking? Well, uh, well, there was definitely that. Yeah, a lot of, you know, running through the, you know, the aisles and jumping, screaming, you know, rolling on the ground, that type of thing. As far as, you know, the different brand of Pentecostal, I'm not really sure because, uh, as, well, whenever we were, I was still younger, we were, we're not, we're not allowed to have TVs. Uh, women had, could not cut their hair. They had to wear the skirts down to the, you know, down to their ankles. Wow. Uh, guys had to have clean cut haircuts, couldn't grow beards, uh, and, uh, couldn't you know, grow, I mean, were they, couldn't grow beards? Yeah. Was that yeah. justified from scripture? And I understand the not I don't, the facial hair, but. That's why, you know, I just, you know, even right then I was like, huh, doesn't it say that, you know, you should grow a beard? But, you know, in our church, I think, well, then again, it was also early 80s, and the, the whole hippie thing was still like, oh, don't want hippies. So <laughs> I think that's the, the main driving force for, you know, they have to have clean-shaven men. <laughs> 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 but uh, I know that, you know, the preacher that, that we had, he was, uh, he saw a lot of that as a bunch of crap, and he was like, okay, well, I'm not saying that TVs are wrong, just don't let them guide your life. Okay. And uh, a lot of uh, what ended up happening was the actual the official church removed us from the church. 
Yeah, we ended up, uh, they ended up, you know, kind of removing us from that and, uh, we were kind of on our own. We, uh, we adopted the non-denominational. It was still Pentecostal though. It well, still okay. is. Yeah. But... It's just, you know, they don't buy into the whole, oh, you have to, you know, no TV and stuff. So were ladies finally able to cut their hair and wear shorter dresses? Uh, actually, I thought it was hilarious the first time my mom put on a pair of pants. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so you're, you know, just like, oh, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, even whenever I was in the school, you know, we had, you know, we had our own basketball team. And they would run around, you know, they would go around to all the other Christian churches and play, and they would be in their, their long you know, sweatpants still playing, the, you know, basketball. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like, just put on shorts. <laughs> no, we can't. It's against the rules. So you indicated then at even a young age, second grade, you started thinking about this whole uh, dichotomy of actual science versus I almost said biblical science. So that's, you know, <laughs> that's like saying he was a very tall, short guy. <laughs> and it just doesn't fly. No. So when we, when did you start to really doubt, question your, your religion to the point that it started edging you outside of its circle? That's an interesting question because, I mean, there's a lot of things where you know, I, I would see that would make me question. But then again, at the same time, I was being a good Christian and say, no, we can't do that. I mean, I can answer a, a question this way on a test, but I've got to see it this way in real life. Okay, so what, and, what things, did you, do you recall what well, things, or just kind of a whole thing? Like the whole uh, idea of evolution, or you know, the idea of uh, a meteor crashing you know, 65 million years ago and killing off all the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. and it's can't be 65 million years ago because, you know, the Earth is at oldest 10,000 years old. So we can't, we can't just, you know, automatically chalk that, uh, that up to this. So we've got to look at it from two different sets of, uh, sets of, you know, uh, sets of eyes. And uh, I, I battled with that for quite a few, uh, quite a few years, even after I kind of walked away from the church because, you know, it's, it wasn't, it was more of a, uh, I know, just conflicting worldviews where you're trying to find the, the, the easy medium. Okay, sure. And it was, it was kind of a long process for that whole thing. So basically, I know some people will argue the fact that, you know, well, you maybe you had a bad experience with uh, Christians and uh, oh, whatnot, but yours was just basically the evidence wasn't pointing towards biblical or? That was part of it. You know, so uh, a lot of it was also the you know the blatant hypocrisy within the church. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest things that comes to mind with that one was uh, whenever I was in high school or in middle school and high school, we, me and my brother, would attend two different you know uh, church camps. Uh, one was done by my grandmother's church, and one was done by a, a family member down at Houston's church or in that Houston area. And uh, we would go, uh, well, this one is actually more around the, the idea of my, my grandmother's church. They had what was called singing camp. Singing camp? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it wasn't too big on that one either. But uh, what, what had happened was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the guys that was, you know, one of the uh, leaders or the, one of the teachers, he went up and he taught this big sermon for about, it was about a two hour long ordeal about the evils and, you know, how bad, uh, non-Christian music is, and especially rock music. Okay. And, you know, how it's of the devil and the devil writes the lyrics and it's, it's, you know, gonna send you to hell and you can't listen to it because it's bad and it's evil and even the drum beats are taken from ancient African rituals and all this other crap. It's like, <laughs> <just> stop! 
and he's like, oh, play it backwards and it's a recipe for a dip. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was one of those things. And what got me was is that, you know, he was so energetic about the whole thing mm -hmm. and saying, you know, bad, this is going to send you to hell. And afterwards, he gets into his car, turns it on, and he's listening to ACDC. Oh, is that right? And I remember this very, very clearly. I'm like, what the hell, dude? You just got up there and wasted two hours. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to preach about it, at least wait till you get out of the parking lot before you turn it on. I mean, because everything you just said went out the window. And that was, uh, that was really one of the biggest things that really made me stop and think, why am I doing this? I know it's something simple and something petty, and a lot of people would actually overlook it. But, I mean, that was one of the biggest things in, you know, in my young little mind. <laughs> I'm like, why would we do that? And then I started noticing it everywhere, too. How old were you at this, uh, at this particular uh, I instance? think I was uh, 13 or 14. 13 or 14, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that would have had, a, had an impact. So, so basically, just, just the lack of evidence or the, the science as well as hypocrisy do you have a, a a particular age where you, you know that okay about here, this is when I, I can go back and notice that boy here's some points or it's just been so subtle that you wake up one day and damn I'm I'm atheist. Uh, well, I think the uh, the final you know straw that broke the camel's back was waking up in one morning and just five, knowing oh by the way I'm an atheist. Uh, but there was a lot uh, there was. Like, you know, the whole idea of prayer. Mm -hmm. I remember whenever I was younger, I would, you know, I was convinced that whatever I would pray for, I would get. Or, you know, or at least get an answer to. And then uh, I remember, you know, fully, you know, fully believing that, you know, if, uh, you know, if I prayed for somebody who was sick, that they would get better. Right, yeah. And, you know, as I started to get older, and whenever I say older, I'm still, you know, talking about, you know, my preteen years. They would, I would see that more and more people just wouldn't get better. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, God can't heal them all. Well, he can, but, you know, it's not his will. Well, it maybe it's not his will, but in some way it's for the best. Well, if it's not for the best, then it's, got to have some benefit that I don't see. Maybe it's just beyond me. So it's always reverting back to your ignorance, basically. Right. Nobody it's, knows what God's going to do or not do. And it's yeah, it's really sad whenever you think about it. I remember one time, uh, this was whenever I was about 16 or 17, uh, they had a uh, traveling minister come, through, come to our church. And... <clears throat> Uh, he was one of those, you know, oh, lay on hands and heal. And, yeah, I mean, he, he was, he got the church all riled up and everything was, you know, he was going through, oh, you're healed. Oh, you, you know, you're healed. And my brother, who was, you know, he had played football all of his life or at that point. It makes it sound like he's really old and <laughs> experienced. He was like 19 at the time. But yeah, he had uh, he had had bad knees, and uh, he was wearing. Uh, I remember he was going in to try and join the army, and he was wearing three knee braces. He came waddling in. They're like, no. <laughs> I messed with him so much about that one too. <laughs> but you know, he uh, he ended up you know going up to my brother and said, "I know you've been suffering from you know knee pains, and I'm here to tell you that that is over for you." Oh, your heels! Get up and walk. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and um, and yeah, you know, he was you know able to get up and you know do all the stuff that he never could do. He was able to run, jump, yeah. But you know, I mean, honestly, I don't remember ever real him actually having knee problems. And if he's watching, I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> Now, uh, there was also another one, you know, same day. My dad, who has, you know, we had known had had, you know, well, he, he's got a broken sniffer. He can't smell hardly anything. 
which is yeah, it's you know, not that detrimental. But you know, my you know, the same guy went up to him and said, you know, you could smell a you know, put perfume under it, and he was like, Well, I could smell that. Miracle. It's perfume. But what got me about the whole thing was uh in that church I had known uh there was two sisters. They had been in the church for as long as I could remember. Both of them severely mentally retarded. And they sat there and watched the whole thing. They would always get excited every time. They're still retarded. Always getting passed up. It's amazing that, you know, we can maybe heal a headache, but let's get some real shit out there. It's just a failure every time. Yeah, and I remember watching it, and it was... I mean, at the time I was like, oh, yay, yay, God. And then I look back on it, I'm like, I wonder what they were thinking the whole time. Because hmm. you would see them get excited every time he'd walk, he'd walk close. I mean, but he just, just passed, passed by. Every time. Okay. Acting like they, he, they weren't even there. And, you know, I mean, now I look back on it, and I know exactly why. It's like, oh, don't want to touch that one. Don't want to call myself out or anything. No. Can't do that. No, but, you know, it's, it's, I mean, putting faith into something like that is just offensive. Yeah, that one, that one had a heavy blow on me as well. Cause, you know, you know, whenever you can't even do some, you can sit there and heal the simple things, but not the big things. It's, it sticks with you. Mm. So, you know, that was, you know, another chink in the armor. How did it affect how you think about yourself? Actually, I think I, I know myself a lot better now. I'm, uh, the process, like I had said previously, the process was very slow for me. Mm -hmm. And it really got to the point where, you know, at some point I realized that prayer wasn't true, so I stopped praying. And I didn't really worry about it too much because, you know, what's the point? Either I'm asking for something I don't need, or I'm asking for God to prove himself, which is incorrect, or I'm saying that I know better than God. So what I'll do is, you know, if I pray, it's just going to be to, you know, get my thoughts in order. Uh, well, if I'm just praying to get my thoughts in order, why not, you know, just, you know, think about something or focus on it? That does just the same. And then, you know, I'd, I'd meet people that would say, oh, well, you know, God filled this prayer. And even while I'm still a Christian, I'm like, ah, you're full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I would start, you know, I would start reading stuff in the Bible and be like, ah, this is, it's either not true or it's allegory. And if it's, you know, then, yeah, so maybe it's just something that I should, you know, use to guide my life. Okay, cool. I can deal with that. And then it became more and more of the fact of, eh, it's not really doing much for me, so I just set it down. And then, uh, like, as far as, you know, like, with the whole science thing, I would see, oh, wow, that works. Oh, wow, that makes sense. And the Bible doesn't really clarify. So, you know, I, you know, as time progressed, I, you know, just stopped even considering the Bible as far as, you know, anything dealing with science or history or, okay. you know, and after a while, it just became a matter of, uh, well, I'm still a Christian or at least, uh, if not, or I'm still a religious person or I, then it, you know, became, well, I believe that there's a God out there. And even, even with my religions, it's, you know, I, whenever, by the time I was 24, I was no longer considering myself Christian. I was moved into the whole, you know, oh, well, I'm pagan. And you know, that lasted, well, as for, I, I wore the label of Wiccan for about a month. And I was like, ah, eh, that's too, it's too fluffy bunny hunger for me. <laughs> and so I, I actually found a book that was on the, the old Norse religions or Vikings. Yeah, and I actually adopted that one for quite a while, and yeah, and even then I would tell people I don't believe that the wars up there, you know, I'm like ah, I'm gonna smite you. <laughs> no, I don't believe that, and and I just you know I just like the you know what they teach. I like you know the standing up for yourself. I like the idea of well, if you're gonna go out, don't go out like a bitch. 
That's the best way to sum it up. <laughs> Don't go out like a bitch. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> so, and, uh, and I, but even then, I wouldn't even consider myself atheist because I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, well, I have a religion or at least I have a set of guiding rules. And then, you know, actually, it wasn't even not that long ago, just a, you know, a matter of months. I was, you know, sitting there watching some stuff on YouTube. I'm like, huh. I'm a fucking atheist. <laughs> it's like it all makes sense. It would it would be literally the next day I woke up and I felt great. I was like, you know what? There's nothing to worry about. And I would see these people like, oh well, God gives me reason to live. Well, I'm sorry. Why do you need a God for that? I, you know, I don't need a God to live. I don't need a God to be happy. I don't need a God to, you know, pay my bills, make me feel special. No, I'm awesome. Fuck that. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> two, two questions. First part, did religion have anything to play in your meeting and marrying? Second part, did your trek of deconversion as you were coming out, did that have any part in the separation? Or is it, would you say it's a completely separate issue? Uh, not ex- yes and no. Uh, whenever I first met my, my ex-wife, I was still very much considering myself a, you know, a Christian. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I was pretty open about it. And I, whenever we, it wasn't until, uh, I think we'd been together about six months married that I found out that she was pagan. Really? Yeah. Okay. And she's like, well, I don't want to tell you at first because, you know, you're Christian. That would be bad. And I was like, ah, whatever. We can make it work. And, uh, yeah, we did for a while, too. And we were actually, you know, pretty pretty close. But I mean, it was it got to the point where, you know, I mean, it actually hit dawned on me later, you know, why would that be okay with me if I was supposed to be Christian? But, you know... That's you know that's a totally different story. Okay. Now, as far as you know, it affecting uh, family members. I've only told a couple of people in my family that I am uh, that I'm an atheist. I haven't told my mom and dad yet. I'm waiting to do that whenever until I see them face to face, and I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just going to lay it on out there, and they'll probably treat it the same way that they treated whenever I told them that I was you know pagan. <laughs> like, oh, okay, great. Can you? Well, let's go to church. <laughs> Even now, you know, like uh, a couple of months, uh, just a you know, couple of months ago, I got a uh, certification for for the job, and I didn't do a lot of studying for it. It was, you know, I give received a list of study material. I read through it a couple of times, and whenever I went went to take the test, nothing I studied was on the uh, was on the test. And I go through, and I'm like, oh, let me go. Well, I ended up passing the test. Awesome. And then I call up my mom, let her know. She's like, well, I was praying for you. I'm like, really, Mom? You have to take that away, too? You can't just say, oh, good job. Yeah. No, no, no. It was God. Thanks, God. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so my mom still lives in perpetual denial that I am not Christian. Just a phase. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, even whenever I got divorced, my I went uh, I went home and I was telling my mom that you know, letting her know that yeah, you know, getting divorced and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. She's like, oh well, you know, maybe God can help you through this. I was like, mom, I'm not I'm not going back to Christianity. I'm just not. I uh, I I'm di- I'm getting a divorce. I am not changing you know my belief system. Just not. And even now, yeah, still, still, she's under the misconception that I'm Christian. Um, now, one of the questions I like to ask a, a lot of people, I get hit with this quite a bit myself, um, and it's that old, uh, you know, I'm just going to say bullshit. I was going to say BS, but that's just not me. People will respond to people like yourself, and they'll quote First John, what is it, First John 2, 19, that would say that if you were really a Christian to begin with, you would stay a Christian, but you're not a Christian uh, because you've left, so you never really were a Christian. How, you know, how would you tell someone 
to bugger off. I mean, how would you explain that? What would your answer be to that that uh, criticism? Well, I've actually already received that one. I was uh, a couple, couple of weeks ago. My aunt was down, and uh, she's uh, well. She was not always a Christian, but she was always uh, within the, the realm of the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so she was coming down. Her her husband has his own church. They, you know, one of the ministers. And me and her were out to dinner, and you know, the the topic got on God and and all all this religious crap. And I was like, "Look, I, I'm sorry, but I'm an atheist." Uh, and she was you know, at that point, she was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I thought she was gonna cry, and I'm like, "No, it's okay. It's it's not that big of a deal." She's like, and and. We started talking about it. She's like, "Well, I still love you, and I'm gonna be praying for you." <laughs> and and then, and she uh, oh. after a while, she was like, "Well, you know, why would you do something like this?" And I'm like, "Oh, I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, I just don't see the validity in it anymore." And she's, "Well, maybe you just weren't ever, you know, really a Christian. Maybe you mm-hmm. need to get to know God. Yeah. Maybe you need to pray more. Have you asked God to help you through this?" What? Do you not listen? There is no God. Why would I ask something that does not exist to help me believe in what does not exist? It's kind of, you know, pointless. You know, why am I going to put my faith into something that I don't believe in to help me believe in itself? Maybe if I believe that that's a pot of gold enough, it'll turn into a pot of gold Didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, maybe if you had true faith, it would have worked. Yeah, I mean, come and on. that's I mean, what she said. She said maybe <laughs> if you had, well, maybe you just need more faith. Maybe you, uh, you were not a true Christian. I was, look, you, you remember whenever I was younger. You remember what I was like. I would, I mean, I was, I was all about it. I was, you know, I, my mom wanted me to be a preacher. I know this, you know, long story, I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, my mom wanted me to be a preacher. You know, I was always going out there. I was always talking to people. I was always finding some way to weasel my way into this conversation just to throw that stuff in there. I was even one of the ones that helped her through her time of, you know, disbelief, I will, I will call it. And I... Uh, She's going to sit there and tell me to my face that I was never a Christian? Hmm. That's, that's just offensive. Just because, you know, you can't, just, just because you are somebody doesn't mean you can't change your mind or can't realize what is really going on. Exactly. Yeah, and very, very, it's, right. it's offensive. Uh, I, it's, pisses me the fuck off, tell you the truth. <laughs> so you've got people that are out there that are like yourself. Um, what advice can you give to them that would maybe help them to to continue all their their deconversion? I think uh, as long as, uh, if if you look at uh, if you look at anything for what it really is, you'll see it for the truth. Uh, if you don't believe, uh, if you if you are, you're having doubts about you know. Is there a God? Well, you know, test it. I know that, you know, the Bible says, you know, you know, you can't test it because, you know, it just doesn't work that way. But, you know, there are ways to look at it where you can actually look at it objectively. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, that doesn't say that just because, oh, you pray for something, that doesn't mean, and it doesn't happen. That doesn't say anything. But if you look at, you know, biology, biology is pretty obvious that it does not require a god to function. Mm. Uh, you know, chemistry does not require a god to function. Uh, cosmology does not require a god to function. Everything in life and everything in the universe that we've come across so far does not require a god to function. And without that function, or without that requirement, it's kind of easy. It's easier to actually stand back and say, "Okay, well." If a God is only required to do whatever I think it is, maybe it's not what I think it is. 
Hmm. Very good. Yeah, and very so, good. I mean, I think at this point, we're, if, if you can reconcile with yourself that uh, it's not a requirement that it be there, it's going to be a lot easier for you to actually, you know, make it, uh, adjust your life to, to the realization that it's not a fact. And it's, you know, pretty relieving in the end whenever you finally do realize it because you don't have to worry about, oh, well, am I doing it for the right reasons? Well, yeah, because you believe that it's for the right reasons. As long as you're not trying to hurt somebody or as long as you're not trying to, you know, uh, wrong somebody, that's for the, it's probably for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, as long as you can say that, that's all you really need. Thanks for being here, Fabian. I Not appreciate wrong. it. And thank you for taking the time to, to watch. We appreciate this very much so. Um, you know, this is, you know, we've had a great guest today, Fabian. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions and, uh, some other things you may want to ask. We'll just go ahead and post those down below. And again, each month, uh, Atheism TV, we produce this My Deconversion Show for your benefit, whether you are atheist, so that you might understand those of us who have deconverted, who were once involved in religion, or maybe, just maybe, you're questioning. Questioning is good. As Fabian just said, it's very good, it's very pleasing on this side, it's real. Anyway, once again, thank you. Have a great day. Make it a non-religious day. And by all means, think. See you later. They invited me to stick around, you know, but I told them there was another place I had to check out tonight.